Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Jaybird TV. Glad that you are here. Today I'm climbing on the moon board and also doing a post climbing workout. So the moon board is such an excellent training tool. I'm getting started on the V4 benchmark biscuits and gravy set by Kyle Knapp. And unexpectedly taking a fall here. So immediately lessons to be learned. The moon board is a very intense training tool, meaning that you got to give it 100% and be ready to pull hard right away. A lot of those holds require immense finger strength. A lot of them are crimpy, slopey, pinchy, and you got to be ready to go get it. So boom, just right there learning something. Um, got to be 100% engaged and ready to go on the moon board. But I would like to send all the benchmarks. It's definitely a goal of mine. So I'd like to get a benchmark V4, and this is a benchmark V7, Laudoro Doro. So go up right, and it's actually a pretty good crimp, and then you do a hand foot match in order to hit that next crimp. Get the hip close to the wall for the right hand crux, and then go out left. From here you can get your foot up, and then I just went big for the finish. Go big or go home. So happy to get the send there. Um, once again, yeah, trying to take off those moonboard benchmarks. I'm pretty psyched about that. And you may recognize this next climb. This is Captain Fitzroy, a V8 benchmark set by Ben Moon. One of my long-standing moonboard projects. I've never been able to get the send on this, but I've definitely been trying it for over a year now. So I love to include it just once or twice in each session and just see how close I am. So pretty close there. I definitely have a lot of that beta dialed. But that last move is the crux and it feels really tough. So once again, just trying that and very close, but unable to really snag that left hold and hold it. So here ripping off the shirt to go beast mode, getting on Bill Clinton's Saxfar. Another really excellent V8 set by Ben Moon. Starts in an undercling and you go out left and then move the feet up to do a big move out right. Swing the body back into the wall and flip that left hand to an undercling to bump the right hand up. And from here, it's a foot match to then go out left. And I intuitively got my right foot on here, which led me to go right hand for the finish, which turned out to not be the way. <laughs> so you definitely wanna go left hand to the finish. The right hand that you have is really great and you could get your left foot situated where I had my right. 20-20 hindsight. So I had to give us another burn. I just love the feel of this route. It's so fun. All the yellow holds are actually pretty great compared to a lot of the other yellow holds on the moon board. And the beta is perfectly forced. It's really great. But there, unable to get the left hand. Now, let's get into the workout. So I kept that climbing session pretty short because this is right before my climbing trip to Chattanooga. So I was tapering. Typically what I've done in the past is I've either completely rested or I've just climbed and trained like normal right up until I went outdoors. Unfortunately that either left me very tired or then oddly feeling out of shape if I took a week off. So what I've been doing now is tapering and doing what I normally do in the gym but doing 50% overall of what I would normally do. So literally if I climb for an hour and a half, just climb for 45 minutes. What's really great about that is that it keeps your body in that really awesome shape that you hopefully get it into and then allows it to repair itself but you just feel great going outside and as you train less your muscles will retain less water as well so you actually feel lighter so just doing some different exercises here this isn't like scripted or anything just kind of some different exercises that i love doing a lot of them are going to be antagonist just because you do so much pulling and climbing it's really great to train the antagonist muscles and just be really well-rounded and uh, you're less likely to get injured that way. So in my last video, I asked you all um, for direction, for your advice and wisdom where I should bring the channel this next year and I was really overwhelmed. Just so many awesome comments and so many comments. Thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every single one. I've been reading through them and so many great suggestions. So I'd love to dive into some of those right now. So my man, Jorge Packer, George Packer, sorry if I got it wrong, uh, was asking about making a video about finger strength and was asking what I think about finger strength. Um, first of all, I think that those lattice training apps are awesome, that you can measure finger strength. I saw an episode of Bobat Bouldering where they went and actually 
had their finger strength and all their body metric measured. I thought it was so cool. I'd love to do that. Might be able to do some sort of that with like an app on my phone or something like that. Um, looks like you actually said app in your comments. So I'm sure there must be one. But as far as it goes in climbing, I think there are three factors in climbing. There's strength, technique, and mentality. They're all very important. But if you were to break down strength, finger strength would be the number one thing. As climbers, rock climbers, or wherever you're climbing, it's really important to have strong fingers. And that's gonna be the basis for how hard you can climb. If you can do 15 one-arm pull-ups, that's awesome, but it might not translate directly over to climbing if your fingers aren't strong enough to bear your weight. So jumping into the workout right here, uh, what I'm doing is toes to bars, which is um, a great core exercise. And here I actually superset it with then doing leg raises and then doing knee raises without any rest, just hanging the entire time. Gonna shred that core, gonna really work on the scapula and the shoulders and the forearms and your grip as well. And you'll notice that I was doing some ring dips and some ring kind of leg raises as well. Rings are excellent because they really force you to stabilize and it builds a lot in your core and all those supporting and stabilizing muscles, giving you that really great comprehensive strength. Pretty excellent stuff. So man, Carl, I uh, love my bouldering vids. Thanks my man. Wanna see loads more, I'll keep making them. Um, he was saying that I should do some indoor lead climbing videos. That would be really interesting. I have done indoor lead, I grew up in climbing with a lot of rope climbing, so I used to do a lot of lead. I used to go to Kentucky in the Red River Gorge, and my first eight or nine trips outdoor climbing were all lead climbing. So I'm not the world's best lead climber by any means. I don't have the greatest mental game when it comes to lead climbing, but I would love to rope back up sometime. Might be a little rusty. I might not have the greatest power endurance right now, but it would be a lot of fun. So I'll definitely look at doing that soon. So my man Drew13600 was saying, outdoor climbing is always fun. You are absolutely right. And thought it'd be cool to see some uh, calisthenics. So this is actually some calisthenics right here. Some of my training is very calisthenics based. Um, I love calisthenics and trying to unlock a lot of the movements and trying to teach my body a lot of the moves. Just so cool, so fun. Um, <laughs> a little hard for me as you can see, but I definitely want to uh, continue to get better as an athlete overall and I want to learn a lot of those moves so I want to get freestanding handstand push-ups something I've really been working at so doing some isometric holds here and for the outdoor climbing piece a lot of people were asking about outdoor climbing which is so awesome outdoor climbing is my absolute favorite thing in climbing I just got back from Chattanooga tonight about an hour ago I was down south climbing for just a few days so my next video I post will be bouldering in Chattanooga. I'm actually doing some editing tonight on it as well. Stay tuned for that. I hear you, my people. And combining uh, Carl's suggestion with Drew's suggestion and everyone else's, um, I would love to do some outdoor lead videos as well. It'd be a little bit more tricky unless I were to bring a GoPro or somehow had cameras kind of hoisted up in order to film it. But of course, I could always just film it from the base. And it'd be so fun to do an out outdoor lead trip. But of course, I will keep doing the outdoor bouldering. And uh, yeah, stay posted for that next video. Chattanooga bouldering. Definitely some really beautiful shots in there. So uh, another really great suggestion here from... Uh, here, actually, Boom Floof was suggesting doing some longer and uncut videos. And kind of breaking down the beta and how I get there. And then, of course, doing the big range of, you know, V2 to V hard will really resonate. Um, I will absolutely do that. I've been trying to have more variety with, you know, climbs in the V2 to V3 range and then some harder things as well. Of course, I think that climbers of all different ranges are hopefully watching these and I want everyone to benefit from seeing their own kind of climbing range in there. Um, and I thought, so thinking about having longer uncut videos i think a really fun organic way to do that would actually be to take another suggestion from a man robert grasso and to climb with uh, the route setters would be really cool 
So climbing at the route setters and getting their thoughts on different routes and flow and technique, especially on their own routes. And maybe they could watch me climb it and then I could watch them climb it. We could talk about beta. It could be a great way to have a longer uncut video. And of course, with just the fun gym vibes of, you know, kind of goofing off and having that conversation. And just like Cameron Murray is suggesting, I would love to have just climbing videos of other people, just more people. Um, you know, it's great to see different betas. And uh, of course, it's more entertaining to not just see me all the time. <laughs> but um, that's something I'll definitely be working on. So was just recently talking to Mike Beanick, good friend of mine and the headsetter. Hopefully we can have some videos coming out pretty soon. Um, but yeah, thank you so much all for the comments. I will continue to work on the channel and get it moving towards all those new directions. So thank you so much for watching, fam. Much love. Peace.